It's the Weather Extreme video. This is for Tuesday, May 29th, the morning edition. I'm James Spann. Back to the two-a-day schedule today as we are off the holiday schedule. And we got a lot to talk about here. Let's get in there and take a look at the water vapor satellite shot around the nation early this morning. Of course, we got Daryl down to the... Daryl? Did I say Daryl? How about Beryl? Goodness, you can tell it's been a long weekend here. Beryl is to the southeast, and that's beginning to move away from us now. And a developing trough to the north and west, and that's going to kick up some interesting days here. Boy, look at that rain. You know, this is a really positive thing. I know, you know, the media wants you to think it was death, doom, and destruction, but uh, Beryl has brought some really good rain to much of North Florida and Georgia where they really need it. Uh, it's been, uh, the, 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 I'll put it this way, the positives have clearly outweighed the negatives with this, despite what you hear, and it's still raining heavily this morning in that region. Here's a look at the uh, surface pattern, and uh, you can see it's 1,008 millibar load that's on the Georgia-Florida border, uh, north-northeast of Tallahassee, and it's moving away from us, and we're clearly on the dry side of the circulation. We do note some convection forming north and west of here, though. This, uh, these storms kind of popped up out of nowhere. That's at 514 this morning. In fact, uh, the Weather Service in Memphis issuing a few severe thunderstorm warnings for those storms over uh, West Tennessee, they're developing down into uh, North Mississippi. And that's a sign the upper high is clearly breaking down when you see some uh, pre-dawn convection like that. And we've got some active convective days ahead. Uh, this is the, uh, first of all, let me show you the track of barrel. And we all know that that's out of here, moving east. And uh, it's going to be off well into the Atlantic as a subtropical storm by Thursday night. All right, convective weather. This is the day one severe weather outlook for today and tonight slight risks to the west and north uh, much of new york parts of new england with a slight risk and again uh, off to the west our friends in oklahoma will have a some active weather today but you think it's going to be active today how about tomorrow uh-huh got a moderate risk out there and we have the old c text over alabama where we might see a few strong storms but clearly the most significant severe weather threat over the southern plains and look at the 45% ring in there. Uh, you know, the, if that stays up in there, this could be a high-risk type setup. So, again, everybody in Oklahoma City and points north, they'll have to keep an eye on that. Really, most of Oklahoma up into Kansas, around that 30% ring. All right, day three, the risk moves into Alabama. The last day of the tornado season, May 31st. You know, I remember I, I said stick a fork in it about four weeks ago. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. We'll see how this plays out, and we'll take a look at the modeling here in a moment and talk about the specific risks. But uh, clearly Thursday, maybe into Friday, we might have some severe weather issues. But the good news, it's going to rain on us, and we need that. It is awfully dusty around here. Uh, this is the rain valid through Saturday evening at 7 o'clock, and this is showing rain amounts of about 1 to 1 and a half inches, and clearly some spots could see more depending on where the stronger storms develop. Uh, and again, while a storm is possible any day for the rest of the week, the, the most widespread action will likely be Thursday and Friday. We'll check the GFS. This is the OZ run, valid at 1 o'clock this afternoon at 500 millibars. You can see the upper high beginning to back down. The 588 bubble is now clearly way to the southwest. And down below that, we'll mention some chance of scattered showers and storms today. Other than that, a mix of sun and clouds with a high around 90. And really the same thing tomorrow. I mean, uh, we've got barrel that's beginning to strengthen again around Cape Fear, North Carolina, moving away from us. And again, with this upper trough coming in from the west, that's going to set up some active convection there. And we'll go to uh, Thursday. And you can see the trough very clearly over the heartland and down below that big convection possible. And maybe some strong storms here, clearly, with the approach of the upper trough Thursday and maybe Thursday night. This could be a deal where there could be some active storms into Thursday night as well. Uh, but clearly, uh, storminess and rain chances are increasing. And then on Friday, look at that thing. It goes negative tilt. And uh, down below that, uh, there's a 1,004 millibar surface low near Chicago with the trailing front. And I'll tell you now that the NAM is faster with this. The, the timing is a little iffy, but clearly with a setup like that, that could be a severe weather look here. Um, of course, Friday is the first day of June, the beginning of meteorological summer. We'll check the 
instability. First off, this is off the GFS at 1 o'clock Friday afternoon. Those numbers are not overwhelming for late May. You know, this time of the year, you expect those numbers to be higher. They're peaking at about uh, 1,500 to 2,000 joules here. But again, the NAM is faster, and it's got the main risk Thursday evening. This is the uh, instability off the NAM Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. And look back in Texas. It's got the uh, instability up to 4,700 joules per kilogram out there. And it's pretty high here as well. But the helicity values are, are displaced farther north. As we, as we look at the tornado threat, this would suggest uh, no major tornado threat. The threats would be from hail and strong straight-line winds. But again, the models are not in very good agreement, and we'll wait for better clarity. But again, for now, we'll just mention a chance of strong to severe storms Thursday and Friday. But the good news, a chance of some beneficial rain. And again, that would suggest maybe not a great tornado threat, but the, the, the risk would be hail and strong winds. After that, boy, Saturday looks gorgeous. Sunny, cooler, low humidity, highs probably low 80s. And Sunday uh, will be warming up again. In fact, uh, th this run is clearly warmer, but understand the low Sunday morning should be down in the 50s. It's going to feel great. We are expecting a high now close to 90 if this is right, but the humidity stays low. Bottom line is the weekend looks great. And then uh, Monday of next week, we're still dry. Tuesday... You can see the westerlies are shifting up north. A little weak impulse there, producing maybe a little better chance of showers and storms a week from today. That's uh, Tuesday, June 5th. We'll check the end of the forecast on June 13th. That looks pretty much like June for us, at least. Big trough out in California, troughing over eastern Canada and down below that. Kind of showery, warm, humid, typical early summer stuff. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog next video here by 3.30 or so today. And uh, don't forget to watch us on ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 on the live stream or the television side. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and God bless. The first thing you've got to understand, you cannot rely on an outdoor siren. You cannot hear those inside a home, a building, a church. It won't work. You've got to get something inside your house. That's a weather radio or maybe a smartphone app. We work with a company that's developed a wonderful weather radio app for Android phones and iPhones. It knows where you are, and if you're in a tornado warning polygon, you get the warning. And if you're not, you don't. It's an effective device, and it's a great way to be sure you get the warning.